Hey guys, this is John Carnell, and I'm here with the second uh, video in this month's Dev Drop uh, for May 2021. You know, the topic is about rate limiting. In this Dev Drop video, we're going to cover how to use our Java SDK to turn on automatic retry logic for rate limiting. So, right now, as it stands, we only have uh, two SDKs that support any kind of rate limiting. Uh, capabilities within them. Our goal is to go through all of our SDKs and come up with a consistent uh, behavior and configuration. But right now, the only two we have is Java and uh, Python. And our Python SDKs uh, uh, rate, retry capabilities are all based on the URL lib3 library and, and the behavior in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through kind of a typical integration where we might get ourselves in trouble with some rate limiting. Uh, it might seem like a little, uh, it's a little contrived, but it happens more often than you think. And then I'm going to show you how to turn on the Java SDK retry logic and show the uh, difference in behavior. Very, very simple to set up and configure, but it's very, very powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And let's just uh, go over. I promise you guys I would never have PowerPoints, but I do have a couple of diagrams. So uh, let's say you're a developer. You built a simple Spring Boot uh, application has a web interface and it's got a microservice backend. And basically this application is gonna allow a supervisor in your call center to enter a queue name um, and look up the current uh, queue observation metrics for it, uh, for the queue that they're interested in. Now this guy is really, really simple. Uh, we're using the Genesis Cloud Java SDK and underneath the covers, this Spring Boot application is going out and it's, uh, basically looking up by name the queue that we're interested in in order to get the ID. And then we're turning around and getting that ID and then using the analytics API to go out and get the queue observations query data, which is basically a real-time snapshot of what is going on with that queue right at that moment. No historical data or anything like that. And in this particular case, you know, the, the web app is polling uh, once the, the supervisor has requested information on this queue, it's pulling every few seconds to go ahead and get the data. Now, what's going to happen? Let's go ahead and start up a, a, my little sample Spring Boot application here. And um, then I'm going to run a little Python script that's going to simulate hitting this endpoint. What we should see happen is, you know, for every call on the Spring Boot application, we're making two calls to our Genesis Cloud API. And after the 150th call, we should start seeing some rate limiting. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. And uh, we're kind of booking through this and it's gonna take a little bit of time. And uh, so far, everything is good. Our response times are good. Most of our calls are falling in the uh, uh, 0.15 seconds to 0.21 seconds. You know, very, very fast call, not uncommon pattern uh, that we see people trying with our API. Now, however, at this point, um, we're getting close to that 150th mark. And now at this point, uh, right about now, we're gonna start seeing that we're getting nothing but 429s being returned back from our call because all the underlying API calls to Genesis Cloud are getting rate limited for this specific OAuth client. Now, again, um, because we're not respecting the retry after and we're just trying over and over again, we're never gonna recover from this. Because the way our platform API works is it returns on a retry on a 429, you have a retry after HTTP header. And if you don't wait that long uh, on the call that's been suggested by the retry after, your next call is just gonna keep extending that time period that you have to wait longer and longer. And you can get into a situation where you're basically denial of service yourself. All right, so let's go ahead now. I'm gonna bring up a diagram that I put together that kind of explains how the Java SDK works because it can be a little bit confusing and we're planning on updating our documentation. But I'll be honest with you, our documentation as it stands right now isn't very clear about this. So basically everything starts with a time window of how long you should try to retry after the very first 429 call comes in. Uh, the reason we do this is if we get to a situation where you're just retrying over and over and over again, um, at some point, this is probably an error with the API itself, and you want your integration to fail. So in order to um, set that time window, you're going to set the max retry time second property to any value you want, usually like 30 seconds or 60 seconds. 
Uh, by the way, our retry logic isn't turned on until this value is set. So by default, the retry logic in the Java SDK is turned off. So now you're happily going along and the first time you get a 429 value returned by the platform API call, it starts this window. And our Java SDK is gonna look at the retry after header and it's going to wait uh, X number of seconds uh, over whatever's being returned. And then it's gonna try again and it's gonna look at the retry after and it's gonna keep going until the last retry has, or the, you know, the last retry has basically gone beyond this max retry time window. And then it's gonna fail with an API exception. Now, in the odd rare chance on a 429, we do not have a retry after, we do default that value to three seconds. Now on 502s, 503s, and 504s, those aren't rate limiting errors. Those could be, hey, a service is temporarily unavailable. Uh, we could be shedding load if uh, the Genesis cloud is uh, under extreme uh, pressure. So we start prioritizing what are important calls. And so the behavior we have with 502s, 503s, and 504s again, mirrors this maximum retry time window. But this time what happens is we do that initial call and we get a 502, 503, or 504 back. By default, we wait three seconds, try again. If we get another uh, of those errors, we wait six seconds, try again, nine seconds, and so on and so forth before until we get beyond this max retry window. Now you can control the number of re uh, maximum retries before back off and how long you're gonna wait between back off. But, um, you know, usually people just use the, the default values. We're using kind of an exponential back off. So let's go ahead and look at our Java code. Now in our Java code, it's really, really simple. Here's where we're setting up our API client. Uh, and uh, that's gonna be used by all of our SDK calls. And the, in order to set up retry configuration, you're gonna instantiate an API client dot retry configuration, retry configuration object and you're gonna set your max retry time. And then if you wanted to set the back off windows uh, for the 503 or 502, 503s and so on and so forth, you can see how they're set over here. Then all you have to do is when you're doing your API client, you've got to set with retry configuration. And again, if you don't set a value in here for max retry times per second, it does not activate the retry logic. So let's go now back over to our little sample code. I'm going to, um, yep, I did activate that. So I'm going to restart my Spring Boot application. And I am going to go ahead and uh, re restart my script. And now we should see uh, at the 150th marks, uh, we should see us start to get rate limited. So it's going to go out here. Now, one thing you got to think about when you're thinking about rate limiting is you got to understand the context in which you're building your integration. If you're doing a, a backend nightly extract or a backend style integration job, it's probably all right for it to just retry and retry and retry. However, if you're building a real-time application that's going to have customers constantly interacting with it, if you get something like a retry, you might not want to let it just sit, that particular thread just sitting out there trying and retrying for a very long time. Instead, you might want to just let the 429 error be come in and either notify the user that uh, the system is busy right now or have some kind of fallback mechanism to like a cache or uh, a default value that you would expect from Genesis Cloud and go from there. So now we can go out here and we can see we've just been rate limited because we're just kind of hanging out there. And if we flip over to the logs, we'll see that our retry after value that was sent back was set at 3,500 milliseconds or 35 seconds. So the SDK is now gonna force a sleep and is not going to allow another call out uh, to any of our Genesis Cloud Platform APIs until we've backed off, all right? And so now we see that we're going again. And at, now at the 300th mark, we're gonna see the same behavior that we saw before, all right. So I'm gonna let this run up until 300 and then uh, we'll kind of wrap up the video. All right. So you guys, uh, I'm gonna turn off my screen share. You know, the big thing is, is that the Java SDK, uh, the Genesis Cloud Java SDK is uh, only does retries for Genesis Cloud um, calls. It is not a general uh, resiliency framework. It does not do retries 
for any APIs outside of the Genesis Cloud APIs. If you're looking for something more uh, configurable, I would recommend you look at something for like Resilience for J, because also remember it's a one and done type thing. You turn it on and it applies to all API calls running within that VM or interacting with that particular client. So if you want something uh, more flexible, we'll be doing a few other dev drops probably later on, kind of showing how to use Resilience for J to kind of achieve some of the retry logic we have here. On a side note too, on uh, May 27th, I'm doing a dev cast to talk about integration patterns, particularly around resiliency. We're gonna cover retry logic, we're gonna cover caching, circuit breakers, timeouts, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna wrap this up guys. Thanks uh, for this dev drop. We're gonna do one more video in this series on caching and why it's important when you're interacting uh, with our API. But otherwise, everybody have a uh, great day and um, look forward to hearing from you. Please leave comments, please hit the like button or dislike button. If you don't like the video, we do look at the comments and we do look at the developer forum posts. Thanks everyone.